Uh, first of all, thanks to Normation for organizing this and uh, letting us do a talk, two talks actually. Thank you. Um, so I will be presenting uh, releases in CF Engine. Uh, Demetrius has a talk tomorrow about uh, how to deploy CF Engine securely in the open internet. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so um, some of this will be a bit technical. Um, uh, I apologize to those who don't know the, the language of CF Engine, but it's not too much. So, uh, what am I going to talk about today? Um, I'm going to talk about how uh, CF Engine uh, does releases uh, and also a uh, sneak peek of some of the new features. Uh, for 3.7.0. So, how do the releases happen? And why is this important? This is a significant change since 3.6.0. Uh, a lot has happened in the company since then, uh, and uh, it's uh, very important for the users of CF Engine to be aware of this change. Uh, and one of the most important reasons is that uh, this is about what you can expect from the releases in CF Engine. Uh, what can you expect from uh, each version that we release, and what can you expect from uh, the release uh, schedule, the timing? So, a little bit about versions. So, we're currently at the 3.6 series, and this is uh, a maintenance uh, release series. Uh, and uh, we're focusing very hard now on keeping this stable uh, and uh, only putting bug fixes and uh, small optimizations into uh, this series. No new features at all. Uh, this hasn't always been the case in the company and the goal uh, with this is to increase the confidence in this series that you can upgrade this without uh, fear of breaking things. Then there's the 3.7 series, which is uh, the next uh, feature release. This is where all the new development happens. Uh, all new features goes into this um, series. Uh, and also, uh, bigger bug fixes, rewrites, things like that, they go into 3.7. We don't want that in 3.6, exactly to keep it stable. And, um, yeah, 3.7, uh, once released, becomes the new stable series. So what is a feature? We define it as anything that changes syntax. Uh, this is obvious because if you have a 3.6 agent on your network and you start using syntax uh, that was introduced in 3.6.4, uh, then any node running 3.6.3 will start to barf on your policy and uh, you'll get a, a red mark in your uh, uh, overview. And uh, also anything that changes behavior, this is of course a little bit of a fuzzy concept because uh, fixing a bug is also changing the behavior, but uh, we uh, try to stay clear of changing uh, anything that, that makes sense. Uh, even if it's something we want to change, uh, we will not do that in a maintenance release. Uh, also, we don't want to change the storage format. Uh, so, uh, all the databases, all the files we use to store uh, various information uh, that people may be using for their own reporting, for example, uh, remains the same. Uh, network protocol, of course, doesn't uh, change, otherwise you couldn't use an old agent to communicate with a new hub, for example. Uh, and finally, the query API, this is for the enterprise version, where you can uh, um, query uh, the state of all your agents. Uh, that's reporting, that's, um, uh, that also doesn't change, because many people may have uh, built interfaces uh, or um, have built their own solutions on top of this API. Of course, we try not to change it too much between um, feature releases either. So what's not a feature? Uh, so the master files is our repository of uh, um, pre-shipped um, policies and it's also where you find all the convenience bundles, convenience uh, uh, body types and all that. 
And additions to this policy is not a uh, feature as long as it's uh, syntax compatible. So you can still get uh, uh, updates to that policy in patch uh, versions, as long as all the agents will understand it. Support for new platform is also defined not as a feature, so for example we might introduce uh, new Red Hat versions in uh, the 3.6 uh, series. Usually that doesn't involve a lot of change, so that's why we think that's safe to do in a maintenance release. So, like I said, uh, we're focusing on uh, 3.6 now. Um, we want to get a stable base to work on uh, for kind of getting uh, into 3.7 later on. Uh, we're putting a lot of focus on tests right now. Um, it's um, yeah, uh, to also to get a stable base, basically one that we can be confident doesn't regress. And also, we've added a lot of uh, platforms uh, lately. Uh, HPUX, for example, was added uh, in 3.6.3. Um, yeah, so we are increasing our uh, coverage there. And the uh, focus will eventually shift to 3.7. Uh, we're not exactly sure when this is going to happen. Uh, it's most likely going to be this quarter or early next quarter. Um, and we still want to keep the scope smaller than previous feature releases. Uh, we like not to change our database backend on every feature release, so we're, we're, we're going to try to uh, to do it in baby steps. Um, the transition to 3.6 was uh, not so um, easy for some people, and this is something we've taken to heart now, and is the reason for this. So a little bit about timing. Uh, we are doing time-based releases now, so um, our goal is to put out a new release every six weeks. Uh, and the changes that don't make it by the deadline will simply wait until the next version. This has the advantage of being very predictable for people uh, when they can expect a new release. Um, and uh, we're aiming for eight releases per year. Uh, where two of them uh, will be feature releases, so that will be 3.7 and then eventually 3.8. Uh, and the rest will be maintenance releases, working off these stable branches. Uh, and yeah, it's important to stress that this is a guideline and not a hard rule, so uh, you know, don't, uh, don't bet a million bucks that the version will be out on a certain day, because things can slip, but uh, we try to stick to this rule out uh, as uh, hard as we can. This is a little bit how uh, the um, Linux kernel also does the development, that you, you uh, keep features out that aren't uh, ready and you release anyway what you have. Uh, so when we put out our release, um, at least for patch releases, we put out a community <coughs> release candidate one week before, uh, if we are able. Uh, this may also switch uh, a little bit. Uh, feature release releases may get it earlier and may get a beta version as well. This hasn't quite been decided yet. Uh, I'm sure we will make an announcement about this uh, on the mailing list uh, once we have a, a solid idea how this is going to happen. Uh, and we always release community and enterprise at the same time now. Uh, before we release community first, um, but now we want to coordinate everything as one release. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe before I get into that, uh, are there any questions about the release? Uh, you said that the 3.7 will be the new stable yes. when it will be released. What will happen to the 3.6 in, in this case? Um, that uh, will... There won't be many new uh, releases for 3.6, most likely. Uh, for 3.6, most likely we will release uh, uh, maintenance <coughs> releases if there is something critical, a critical bug. Okay. Um, but don't expect many more releases of 3.6 after 3.7 has been released. 
that becomes the new... But, but there will be some if there, is, if there are some critical words. If there is a security hole, uh, if there is uh, uh, something urgent that comes up on a new platform, for example, or something like that, there may be a new one. But uh, most uh, bug fixes will then be scheduled for 3.7. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, so um, new features in 3.7. Uh, 3.7 is still a bit away, so uh, these things aren't really um, written in stone, some of them. We have some features that have been developed already, uh, and uh, then we have things that are uh, being considered, so don't take this as uh, uh, absolute. Um, it's uh, things that may or may not be developed depending on interest or depending on uh, capacity uh, before um, we get to that. So, what's coming in 3.7? Definitely these three things. Improved logging format. Uh, I'll get into that later. Uh, YAML support and uh, new uh, language functions. So, Improved logging format. This is a snippet from the 3.6 logs. Uh, this is a wall of text, I would say. And for those of you who haven't uh, dealt with this before, you see a timestamp here. And the useful uh, output actually starts not even on this line, but on the, on the third line, actually. Here is the useful output from, from that particular time. So it's extremely verbose. It's informational, but it's, it's too verbose. Um, so we've tried to change that in 3.7. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to show in detail how it's changed, because uh, there are a lot of small things. But generally, generally uh, it's now, uh, first of all, we got rid of most of the prefix stuff. So uh, instead of prefixing every line with a long uh, string of uh, where did this happen and stuff like that. We now have headers everywhere. So there's a header for, for example, this uh, promise. Uh, see, promiser affected object rotate outputs. So this concerns all of the, uh, I mean, all the messages after this concerns that promise. And then you'll just get messages on one line without all this prefix stuff. Uh, and then it ends uh, here. So it's like kept in blocks. So this is just an example. Um, yeah, so headers uh, grouping, I mentioned that. Also, um, uh, each message has a message type prefix. Uh, so if you're searching for something in particular, you can search for the prefix um, to get a type. And uh, yeah, no timestamps. But they can be turned off if you're, uh, sorry, on, uh, if you're, um, debugging something timing critical for something. So, YAML. What is YAML? It's uh, a, uh, basically a data format that extends JSON. So all JSON is also valid uh, YAML. Uh, but it has the advantage of being much more uh, humanly readable. Um, I'll show you an example. Um, and yeah, CF Engine implements YAML through these functions. Um, and uh, um, CF Engine, for those who don't know, how this have this concept of uh, a data container. Uh, so that's represented uh, as a tree of arrays and um, um, uh, key value pairs. Uh, and that's exactly how YAML is also structured. So this maps very nicely into the language. So here's an example. Um, this is how you write, uh, uh, like for example, the key value pair name John Smith in JSON and YAML. You can see that YAML is, uh, it's almost like you could type it into a text file. This is what you would type, right? Um, so YAML, for example, treats indentation as, the, uh, as significant. So, uh, 
the list, for example, you can, if you indent some points further, then they will become some elements. So that's very nice. Um, I'll show you a little demo of this, how this can be used. So, can you see this? Yeah. Um, here's an example of um, uh, a YAML file. So here I've, I have a list. And you can see here that the two uh, dashes here, they designate my list. So this list contains a two elements. Uh, two elements where we have key value pairs, hostname, packages, and users. Um, so I've given uh, um, a hostname for each um, element, and I can use this to uh, select from the policy uh, which one of these do I want to uh, look at, depending on the hostname, and then these other properties here can define actions that I want to take uh, on the host with that name. So, if you look at an example policy, um, there's a little bit of boilerplate here, um, but the important thing is here, uh, you read in this config file, um, and uh, again, this is a little bit, I won't go into detail here, but uh, you use uh, classes and variables to uh, compare uh, the host name of this machine, I'll just put it here. Uh, coded it directly into PRDDB. Um, and uh, this just selects the, the class uh, that has this host name uh, from the YAML file. So I'm comparing them and then I'm setting uh, my host to uh, the index of the host that I have. Uh, I'll uh, uh, Jonathan, will there be a place where you can download the slides afterwards? Because then I can post this example as well. Yeah, we'll put them on the Vital CF Engine page on Config Management. Okay, then uh, I can put this um, <coughs> uh, policy there so uh, you can look more at it in detail later. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not taking any real action here, I'm just showing that uh, I'm creating these users based on the config from the YAML file and installing these packages. So. Going back to the YAML file, if I run this, I get creating users root, John and Debbie, and installing the package Postgres. And this came from uh, this part. And uh, just for fun, let's change it to the other server, PRD Web. 